hey folks it's John with Ozarks Backroads with you so I've got about everything I own packed up on the Ibex here the 800T we're going to see if this thing is really a uh, a uh, adventure touring bike or not so I'm heading out from south central Missouri this morning uh, I'm going to make a stop in uh, western Oklahoma but ultimately I'm going to land in Silver City New Mexico we're going to stay out there for about a week and then we'll move on up to uh, Grand Junction, Colorado and ride around in some of the canyon lands around Moab, Utah and also the mountains there in uh, western Colorado. So we're going to answer some questions here. If the Ibex is up to the challenge, uh, is it uh, going to fall apart or is it going to make the trip? Stick around, we'll find out. Well, we've made it out to South Central Kansas today. So far, we're in a little town called Caldwell, Kansas. It's on the, just north of the state line with Oklahoma, right in the center of the state. Thought I'd stop in here and kind of check in and see how we're getting along. We've probably been on the bike for five or six, probably six hours now. It's done real good. I haven't had any issues with it other than uh, about an hour ago, I filled up with fuel and I got a slug of water in my fuel and it went to uh, cutting out immediately before I even got out of the parking lot of the gas station but uh, I was able to keep it going and it cleared up within I'd say uh, oh I don't know a mile and a half two miles it had cleared out and whatever was in there went through and uh, haven't had any more trouble since then that's been over an hour so I think we had a slug of water in the fuel but other than that, everything's been going pretty good. Uh, the Ibex is pretty comfortable. It's a, good, uh, it's a good bike on the highway. Carries luggage well. It's not too bad to deal with. We'll take a look at Main Street here. Got some cool old buildings from back in the day. I'd say some of these are pretty old. This looks like an old, maybe an old theater. 1910 it says still got a few signs painted on the sides of the buildings that's cool this is pretty typical of a little Kansas town you see a lot of them like this so yeah the the little CF moto has done great so far uh, it really does travel nicely. It's very comfortable and the cruise control works good on it. Pretty much just set it and sit there and daydream, try not to let anybody pull out in front of me. We're in western Oklahoma now. It's very flat and very desolate out here. Just crossed into West Texas. I believe it's even flatter and more desolate. Well, I got a warm shower and a soft bed. It doesn't get much better than this. Well, it's day uh, two. We've made our way all the way out into West Texas now. Uh, I just crossed the Canadian River here in West Texas. The uh, CF Moto's been doing real good. The Ibex, I haven't had any issues with it. Uh, it's been pretty nice to travel on. Uh, I really don't have any complaints. It's quite comfortable. Got a lot of stuff loaded up on it, so it's top heavy. But uh, any bike you do that to is going to be top heavy. But this one does pretty well. There's a cool old bridge here over the Canadian River. Uh, it's an old wagon bridge built, oh, I think they said 1915. Uh, we'll take a look at it. It's kind of cool. So here's the signboard on the bridge. It talks about when it was built in 1915 and uh, it was uh, originally 17 sections, trusses that were 153 feet long each. And apparently in the 20s, 1923, the river washed out the north end of the bridge and they had to extend it uh, longer. So now it's 3,200 feet long so they've done a nice job on this they've put a new deck on it uh, so it can be used as a footbridge and you can walk all the way out over the canadian river on this thing of course it's a mile long so it's a long walk 
This old bridge still got the light fixtures. Looks like they're probably original to the span from the turn of the century, 1915, 16. Pretty cool. We finally made it to the river. And wouldn't you know, the river is almost at the other end of the bridge. It's a long way. It's a big old long bridge. The water's pretty brown. A lot of red uh, Texas mud in that, or dirt in that water. So there's where my bike's at. It's about 3,000 feet that way. Well, that's a pretty cool old bridge right there. Long sucker. We're gonna get mounted up on our uh, Ibex here and continue, continue our trek west. So we're headed to uh, Roswell, New Mexico for the night. Well, we've got more Texas desolation here. Well, here's a cool old place I found along the way. It's an old gas station from back in the day. We're about an hour out of uh, Roswell, New Mexico. So this is pretty cool architecture here, kind of southwestern style. Really neat, totally abandoned. Got a two bay garage there. You can get your old car worked on if you were traveling through the area. Had trouble, they'd probably fix you up. Pretty neat. Well, if we're going to make Roswell by nightfall, we've got to keep rolling. Well, we've made it to Roswell in good time. You could buy your favorite alien a gift here. Well, we'll pull in here and get some fuel for our ride into Silver City tomorrow. Well, it's day three. We got up early and uh, packed up, left our room there in Roswell. We're headed to Silver City, New Mexico today. So this will be our, uh, our push into Silver City to set up base camp. We're, into, uh, we're starting to get into a little higher country here. It's getting a little cooler. Oh, this is much better. Uh, we're up into some proper alpine uh, uh, territory here. This is really nice. Alright, we finally made it to Silver City. We're at the uh, KOA in Silver City. We're setting up base camp here. We're going to be here for, I believe, five nights. We'll be doing some expeditions from base camp for the next few days, uh, checking out the mountains here uh, around Silver City, New Mexico. Florida lawyer, and he will Prohoc VJ, probably under Lindsey Halligan, uh, who is still on the legal team. Here was Donald Trump. We've made it to Silver City, New Mexico, and set up base camp. Uh, got in there yesterday evening. So I spent the day yesterday riding from Roswell, New Mexico, down to Silver City. So I've set up base camp and I'm ready to explore the area. We're up in the mountains north of Silver City this morning. We're heading to some cliff dwellings. Some cliff dwellings from a thousand years ago. Some of the folks that were living here back then, why they uh, stacked up some rocks and uh, made some pretty cool dwellings. We're going to go take a look at those. Let's get mounted up on our CF moto. We've got a beautiful ride through the mountains uh, to get to these cliff dwellings. So we'll get going here. Uh, I'm just going up here to the cliff dwellings. Uh, that's fun. Yeah. I just had eye surgery Tuesday. Oh, you're getting rebuilt. <laughs> yeah, I need one more eye and one more hip. We're done. Oh, my. Yeah, I'm old. You well, you too. Have a good day. <laughs> So they got some beautiful mountains here just north of Silver City. 
We've climbed up in here. Uh, there's a little village just north of town up in the mountains called Pico Altos, which I think means High Pines. And I'd say that's a good name. The uh, CF Moto has done really good on the trip out. Haven't had really any issues. I did get a tank of wa uh, water and some fuel out in West Texas. Uh, they've had a huge amount of rain out there. Apparently they got some water in their fuel. Uh, I filled up and about didn't make it out of the parking lot. But uh, I finally, I think I got that worked through. I put a, I ran a whole bottle of fuel conditioner through it yesterday, trying to work that water on out. And it's been doing all right. Uh, I think we got most of it gone, if not all of it. I'll tell you, uh, about the Vibe engine on this, it's really a high compression uh, engine on this, uh, the uh, 790 KTM Adventure and engine is really high compression. That's what gives it the, the pulses, the vibes that you feel down low in the RPMs. But uh, being up here at higher altitude has really settled that down. It's taken some of the compression out of the engine. So with less air going in the engine, it's really settled the, uh, the vibey engine pulses down at lower RPM. I really haven't had much, noticed them much since I've been up above 5,000 or 6,000 feet. The other thing, uh, I guess negative thing that I've noticed most significantly on the trip out was uh, engine heat. Coming off the radiators, it's ducted out on either side of the fairings and it dumps it right on your shins. And I've had some pretty hot shins the last three days, uh, riding out across the desert in the hot weather. That's something that needs to be addressed, I think, if, if this is gonna be really used as a, you know, a, an adventure touring bike, people are gonna travel on it. It ain't cool having all that hot air dumping out right on your shins. The, uh, the wind protection is, is so good, you don't get any wind on your knees, on your uh, legs, when you're riding down the highway, uh, none. But you do get that hot air and it really heats them up. Uh, you really have to hang your uh, knee way out wide to get any air on your leg at all to cool your legs off. So I've really enjoyed the, uh, the CF Moto. It's, it's been pretty nice to travel on. Uh, the cruise control works pretty good on it, and it's a real lifesaver. The handlebars aren't uncomfortable. They don't hurt my hands like, like most adventure bikes. So this, these cliff dwellings should be pretty cool. You can actually go in them, and they're like 85% original complete. Uh, they're, they're just super well preserved. Right. We've got a little view right here. We finally came up out of the, uh, out of the valley really pretty some big country up in here big mountains and deep valleys uh oh the buzzards are waiting on me that's not a good sign alright get out of the way and don't crap on me. Please don't crap on me. I'd say we're here. The road ends here. Hi. It's as far as you can go. We'll have to go up here and get the scoop. Let's see what's going on. Climbing all these stairs takes a little time. We're up about 7,500 feet here. And uh, old Ozark's back roads can't do a whole lot of that at this altitude, but I'm very patient. This is just pretty cool. These were occupied about a thousand years ago. So this was before the arrival of the S Spaniards when this was occupied. It's about a thousand years ago. They didn't have horses. We didn't have horses in North America before the Spaniards got here. So these folks were uh, living in, building uh, their homes here in these uh, 
in these cliffs and farming this valley down here. So they didn't have horses to help them. They had to do it all by hand. So this is pretty cool. open pit copper mine I ran upon on my way back to uh, base camp today. It's a big dude. It's amazing they can take a mountain like that and turn it into a hole in the ground like this. Totally amazing. <laughs> 